We have always assumed that the Kemetu, the ancient Egyptians, had invented the mummification process, a process practiced by many ancient civilizations. However, the level of sophistication achieved by the Egyptians at such a remote period of time is simply unmatched. But archaeologists have now discovered the mummified remains of a young boy in the Libyan desert, far older than the first Egyptian mummifications. And all this could put into question the assumption that the ancient Egyptians created the mummification process from scratch. Who were these people? Did the ancient Egyptians inherit the mummification process from the Sahara Desert? Is there any link between these ancient Libyan and Kemet? And what do the origins of these people say about the ancient Egyptians themselves and the birth of the greatest civilization in history? It is often difficult to truly appreciate the sheer size of the African continent. Severely misrepresented in maps, it is wide enough to hold all these landmark countries, and then some. It is also home to the largest desert in the world, a desert so large that it covers a quarter of the landmass of the continent. It is at the southern border of Libya that we start our journey, a land where only the hardy survive, those who have tamed the dunes, the true soldiers of the sun, the Tuareg, and it is in their domain that the most unlikely of discoveries was made. In the 1960s, the mummy of a young boy was discovered. They named him Uan Mahujaj, after the rock formations next to which he was found. It has taken this long for archaeologists to unravel, piece by piece, the secrets that it had wrapped up for millennia. Like the unraveling of the delicate bandages enveloping its body, Uan Mahujaj helped archaeologists to piece together the rich history of this region of the Sahara. A history full of surprises and full of significance for the civilizations that were to follow in its tracks. And one of its first startling data points had to do with the people who lived in that region when the young boy was alive. Help keep Without History independent by supporting us on Patreon, using one of the links in the description, or by sharing this video on your social media outlets. Today, the inhabitants of Libya are thought of as distinctively Middle Eastern. But back in 3600 BC, the inhabitants of southern Libya were Black African. Before the discovery of the mummy, archaeologists had inferred that ancient Libyans were Black thanks to DNA studies and the numerous rock art found in southern Libya and throughout the ancient Sahara. But the DNA analysis of Uan Mahujaj also confirms this. And this was the beginning of a long series of studies that would shed light on a previously unknown African culture. Years of erosion had uncovered part of the mummy. With part of its protective sac protubing out of the soil, it was discovered. Upon opening the sac, they discovered the mummy of the young boy. It had been embalmed and then placed on a sac made of antelope skin. It was then further protected from the elements with an insulating layer of leaves. This process, along with a very careful selection of the burial place, had ensured that the boy would stay undisturbed for the coming millennia. Extensive examination of the mummy was done and more information emerged. Uan Mahujaj was a two-and-a-half-year-old black boy. This had been determined by analyzing the boy's teeth, cranial structure, and genes. However, when the carbon dating was undertaken, it became even more evident that this young boy would rewrite African history. The carbon dating firmly indicated that the boy was 5,500 years old. Truly remarkable. A feat that was rivaling Egyptian mummifications, in truth, surpassing it, as it predates the first Kemetic mummifications by at least 1,000 years. How did the African people, in such an early stage of history, come to have such a high degree of sophistication and mastery of the mummification process? Close examination of the mummy revealed that there was still organic matter present. Furthermore, the whole skeletal structure was pretty much preserved. 
Scientists concluded that the boy went through an extensive mummification process where organic matter was adorned onto the dead body of the child to slow down or prevent decomposition. Much like in the Nile Valley, via process of evisceration, an incision was discovered in the abdomen of the child where highly perishable soft tissue would have been removed and stuffed with mummifying agents. This firmly established the Central Sahara region as the birthplace of mummification. The key question that remained was, did the mummification process of Uan Mahujaj influence the Kemetic practice a 1,000 years later? Or did these practices develop independently? And why do their rock art feature cattle so prominently? There are clues to these questions painted all over cave and rocks in the Sahara today. Eloquent depictions of animals that live in the savanna. Alligators, big cats, giraffes, rhinos, antelopes, hogs. All of them requiring an environment where water is abundant. And it shows what this part of the world would have looked like 6,000 years ago. Not too different from the savannas in Kenya or South Africa today. Thanks to climatology and their satellite LIDAR technology, we now know that the whole area was a wet marshland along with paleo lakes, a network of rivers, and tall grass covering the plains. This is also corroborated by sediment samples on the ground. Fossilized samples of pollen are identical to those found in the savannas of Africa. There are also drawings of domesticated animals, like goats and cattle, lots of cattle. In fact, an abundance of evidence has been found that shows that the people of Uan Mahujaj had a form of cattle worship. And this, well before Kemet. Uan Mahujaj and his people would have lived in a true Garden of Eden, a pastoral society that was beginning to gather knowledge on how to master the elements but, and even how to defy time. Soon enough, 500 years after the mummification of Uan Mahujaj, the environment started to dry up. Their once lush savanna became inhospitable to their way of life. Following the trail of water, these people would have moved east and ended up in the last remaining bastion of humidity across the northern African terrain, the Nile. It is there that the people of southern Libya merged with another equally astonishing group from Central Africa a group that had migrated from present-day Congo, DRC, and that had a fascinating mathematical culture. The creators of the 20,000-year-old Ishango Bone, a mathematical sieve, that showed that Africans knew of advanced math, all the way to discovering relationships between prime numbers. The merging of these two cultures, one adept in mummification, the other advanced in math, now unified by one of the most giving and most fertile lands in history. It is these motifs, cattle worship, advanced mathematics, mummification, and black African genetic diversity that we find in the nubio kemetic civilization complex. From the pre-dynastic era all the way to the New Kingdom before the end of Kemet in 300 BC. More and more the Sahara is giving historians insight into how advanced African civilizations were before the drying up of the Sahara. An ecological disaster that happened in slow motion and caused mass migration of black people east and south. If you like this content, please share it on all your social media platforms. This really helps us. If you can, support Without History with the links below.
Don't miss our previous documentary on the surprising links between Mesoamerican civilizations and Africa. Link in the description. I want to thank all of our Patreon members and paid subscribers. Not only are you helping keep this channel independent, but you are also showing the importance of history for our community and the generations to come. Join us and see how those who are said to be without history birthed civilization itself. 